Welcome back. This segment of our program is brought to you by Madisonville Marine. Folks, the most important aspect of buying a boat isn't price, it isn't customer service, though both are wildly important. The most important thing is finding the right boat for you. So many people go in there and they say, hey, I want this kind of boat. And they never think about, well, my family would actually like to be involved in this thing too, so maybe we should get a deck boat instead of this bass fishing boat. Or maybe we should get ski boat, or maybe we should get uh, a pontoon, or vice versa. Maybe all you need is the outdoorsman boat, the boat for you to go out in the, in the wild, do your fishing, hunting, all that stuff. Um, the best place to go then is the place that has the biggest selection of boats. That's Madisonville Marine. They carry more boat lines than anyone else. They got the boat show going up in Knoxville in about a month from now, but you can get down and see them at Madisonville Marine on Highway 411 North in Madisonville, or you can visit them at madmarine.com. And the trick is, if you want a boat, you better get in line right now because these companies are still running behind. You're having to place orders, and this is the place to go. There's no better place to buy a boat because of that selection. They can take care of you and make sure you get the right boat for you. Madisonville Marine. All right, college football writers are all rushing to put out what everyone calls their way too early top 25. It's, you know, <laughs> cottage industry. You just, yeah. season's over, so I have to have my top 25 ready. So everybody's putting those things out. Tennessee has been all over the board and off it. Uh, let's take a look at three that I spotted this week. Brett McMurphy of the Action Network, longtime sports writer, has the Vols at number 17. Stuart Mandel of The Athletic has Tennessee number 13 in America. Wow. Number 13 in the country. That's amazing. Mark Schlebaugh, ESPN, of course, <laughs> doesn't have the Vols ranked at all. Interestingly, uh, McMurphy has Tennessee 17th behind Bama, Georgia, A&M, and Arkansas. So he's in fifth in the SEC. Stuart Mandel has them behind only Alabama, Georgia, and A&M. He's got them as the fourth best SEC team next year. Schlebaugh, and this ticked off some Vol fans on the message boards I saw, he's got Alabama, Georgia, A&M, and then Arkansas 20th, Kentucky 21st, Ole Miss 23rd, South Carolina 25th. He's got Kentucky and South Carolina both right <laughs> ahead of the Vols. Hater. So, yeah, he hates them. So, uh, he's like Jay Billis down there. <laughs> uh, Minus the ice so cream. Instead, Minus instead the, fourth, the ice cream. Instead of the fourth best team in the SEC, he, he has them no better than the fourth best team in the East. So, here's my question. Uh, do you think, wh where does the truth lie? 13th? Mm -mm. Not ranked? Mm -mm. 17th? Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> we got three choices. You don't go anywhere. 18, so. 19, 20. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what's the right realm? for? What's the right, right range for Tennessee? I, I think in the, in the 20s. Okay. Yeah. 22, 23, 24. Yeah. Somewhere right in there. I think that, that's fair. And that would be, in my mind, an achievement. Okay. Yeah, I would, I would have Tennessee in the 20 to 25 range probably. I wouldn't have South Carolina ranked. I'd have Tennessee and Kentucky very comparable. I know Tennessee won. Mm -hmm. It was very close. Could have gone either way at the end. So uh, those two programs, I think, will be compared to each other. There will be a lot of off-season South Carolina love, though, because of how they finished. And the Spencer, Spencer, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, everyone here is kind of, we've poo-pooed South Carolina <laughs> all season. Mm -hmm. Like They're a joke. And then Tennessee throttles them. What but Jimmy then, Himes did. But then South Carolina, and, and, and he let us hear it when he was right. Uh, and, but then South Carolina finished strong, a lot yeah. better than I thought. And you could make the case, you know, they did win their bowl game against the North Carolina team that's better than the Purdue team you lost to. All, that's, all that depends on who's yeah. playing and who wants yeah. the game and all that. I get it. But you can make a case their that Shane Beamer. Their preseason win total was four, and they won six plus the bowl game. Right. You can make a case Shane Beamer did a better job than Josh Heupel this year, and I think Josh Heupel did a really good job. Which I did a couple not of an, weeks ago. Not an icon Heupel. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, well, Vince was, I think Vince was right. If anyway. Tennessee had won the bowl game, I think you're inside the top 25, don't you? Yeah, yeah with everybody. Should they be? Yeah. Everybody thinks they should be. Do you think they'd be ranked? Yeah. I wouldn't yeah. rank them. Well, right no, I, I think I think it's in the middle, but where where the truth lies, and that's where you guys said twenty to twenty five. I think I see Tennessee as about an eight win team. I know ESPN, FBI, they had them in nine wins next year. I think eight is probably more appropriate yep. with the roster that they have. The schedule could be conducive to nine, but it doesn't always play that way. I, I think eight wins is at twenty to twenty five. I still have that image of how poorly the defense played in the bowl game. Yeah. It's tough to me to rank them inside the top twenty five. While I still have that image. I thought you just did rank them inside the top 20. Well, I said they're borderline. 
to me. Okay. They're yeah, I, w- I wouldn't rank them for what you right. just said. You've got defensive issues. Right. Um, I'm going with Hendon Hooker. Okay, it's never mind with me. You just <laughs> give your, yeah, I'm sorry. going with Hendon Hooker. <laughs> well, and, and another one, Dennis Dodd, CBS Sports Line, had him 15, and Take that's over, what he said. do anything else here? <laughs> McMahon? I'm good. Okay. Um, yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> what were you going to say? I said Dennis Dodd, CBS Sports Line, had him 15, and that's exactly what he said, Bob, Hendon Hooker. An offense yeah. that had 31 touchdown passes or whatever. What happens if he yeah. sprains an ankle? Ex- well, exactly. You and he said, he said high for <laughs> seven <laughs> wins, and he said nine wins possible. But the defense has to improve. See, my, my concern is your defense is going to be your defense. That's just what you're always going to have with Josh Heupel. Uh, I, I think their offense is going to be exciting probably as usual, uh, which you're always going to have with Josh Heupel. But I'm not, I'm not all in on this schedule being a breeze. Uh, you play the last three national champions this year. LSU, Georgia, and Alabama are all on your schedule. And LSU, they weren't good last year. Right. Their roster is still pretty good. And no. now they got a guy named Brian Kelly taking right. over. That's not easy. Yeah, Everybody's like, well, Pitt doesn't have Kenny Pickett. Yeah, they've got a transfer coming in, and I have no clue what they're going to have around him. Right. So uh, that's a road game and with Mandel the ACC champion. So number 13, he had Pitt number 11. See, how do you have, yeah. Okay, yeah, how do you have Tennessee number and I didn't notice that. How do you have yeah. Tennessee 13 if you've got them playing number 11, Pitt? I think and, a lot of people no. were sleeping on LSU next year. And thinking, okay, Tennessee's better than LSU, which I don't totally agree with that. Well, I don't. I think Tennessee's eight and four and slips into the top twenty-five. Yeah, I think yeah. seven and five again is probably what you're looking at, and yeah. I'll be surprised. Maybe because here's what you're thinking: it, LSU, Georgia, Alabama. I would chalk those up at losses right now. Pitt, it's on the road. I would think that's. I'm fifty-fifty on that one. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, then you've got just taking care of business with Kentucky. South Carolina, Missouri, you going to beat all those teams again this year? Oh, I, I need to see yeah, in Florida. I need to see that again before yeah, I'm right. in. There, there's a lot of people, well, you beat them this year, so, okay, we no longer have to worry about them. We're out of that mess. We're, we're now the, the B level of the SEC. It's like, I need to see more than one year of that. I think you're still in that B level down there, uh, and maybe they'll get out of it. Again, I'm not right. knocking what they did this year. I think you did a great job. I'm just not ready to say that was the breakout. Right. And now we're going to be here. I want to see a little bit more before I say, okay, you've broken out. And motivation-wise, I would read for Tennessee be just outside the top 25. I Agreed. don't think it's a huge deal, but I think that's enough to, hey, let, let, let's, let's get in that mix. That's the, one of the next steps we got to take with this program. Yeah, but if one has them at 13 and another unranked, how much is the unranked going to be motivation? Yeah, if I'm Josh Heupel, I'm only showing the Mark Schleyball top right. team. <laughs> I'm not going to let them see the other two. But if I'm Josh Heupel, I'm not showing the Vol fan base the number 13. Yes, exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I don't That's think awesome. that helps him. I, I don't I would, think being ranked oh, number 13 helps that whole him. I would put a nice bet out there. Tennessee does not finish 13th or higher. Well, here's the, the season. Here's what, you know, Mandel had Bama and Georgia in the SEC ranked ahead of Tennessee. He had Pitt ranked ahead of Tennessee. That would make them nine and three. Are you can be number thirteen in the country at nine and three. I guess possible. You are in the SEC, so you get a bump. If you're considering those are the only three teams that beat them. Yeah. If that were to happen, yeah, you beat Florida, LSU, and the the other team, then yeah, probably so. Yeah. Let's see. We'll see what happens. All right. All right. Very good. Uh, when we come back, oh, <laughs> there was a comment from a former Vol made this week that uh, I found a little ironic. <laughs> uh, we'll discuss that next, um, and also. Uh, I got a personal bit of information to uh, throw out to somebody. So come on back on the sports source.